Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. Let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got done up here. I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, and I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white's there just to make it slick and wet, and it makes painting much easier. I thought maybe today we'd do a maybe a winter scene that's very warm and I think you'll like it. Let's start out with a little Indian yellow on the old two inch brush. Don't need much, just a small amount of the Indian yellow. And go right up in here. Sometimes winter scenes can be so cold that they, they're, almost, they're almost difficult to look at. So I thought, thought today we'd do a winter scene that's very warm, it's very pretty. It'll just sort of make you feel good. There, a little bit of the Indian yellow without even washing the brush, I'll go right into some yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre. And we just blend that using little X's, little crisscross strokes. But you don't even have to wash the brush. You can go right into the yellow ochre. No big deal. There. Shoot, that's working so good. I tell you what, tell you what. I'll go right into, once again, without washing the brush, a little bit of the bright red. We'll just have a firecracker of a sky up here. Beautiful sky. One that makes you feel good when you look at it. If you hang this in your room when you walk in, it'll absolutely warm up a room. There we are. And we all have rooms in our home that, that need to be warmed up. There. All right. Now, then maybe I'll wash the old brush finally. But already we've blended those colors together. And it's very pretty. Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and then the bright red. And now let's wash the brush. As you know, we wash our brushes in odorless paint thinner. And we'll shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That really is the fun part. Now then, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the, a little bit of the phthalo blue, just a small amount. And let's go right up here to the top. Still using the little crisscrosses, the little X strokes. We'll just put in the rest of the sky using the phthalo blue that easy. Something about like that. There. Then I'll wash the brush and come back and blend those together. All right. Well, while we have that blue in there, let's just go across the bottom. We're going to have a little snow. That'll just end up being some beautiful shadows in our snow. And it's a good way to wipe the excess paint out of your brush. Okay. And one more time, we'll wash the old brush. Really and truly, the, the brush washing is the most fun part of this. <laughs> and it's the way I get even with a crew for hassling me. All right. Now then, with a clean, dry brush, I just want to blend these areas together. About like that. And that's all we're looking for. All right. Now, today let's take a little fan brush. I'm using a number six fan brush. Sometimes, as some people like to use a number three, it's a little smaller and some people feel a little more comfortable with it. It's up to you. Okay. Maybe in our world there's a happy little cloud. It just sort of floats around in the sky up here and has a good time. There, a little more color. There we are. See, just let it float around though. Clouds may be one of the freest things in nature. So just let them go. Let them have a good time in your world. All right. Now then. Back to a two inch brush and very gently I'm just going to blend that back edge out till it disappears right into nothing. Then we'll fluff the cloud. See there? Just sort of fluff it up. Fluff it up. All right. And it gives us an indication of a little cloud that's living far away. Tell you what, shoot. Cloud needs a little friend, so we'll give him one. Lives right there. Just a happy little guy. In my world, everything is happy. So we have happy little clouds and happy trees. All right, there we go. And once again, I beat the brush just to knock any, any excess paint off of it so I don't have to go through the whole cleaning procedure. There. And if you just have a little paint on the tip, that way you can clean the brush without going through all the washing and splattering everybody. It just makes it a lot easier. There we are. 
something about like that. And I just want the indication of some little happy clouds, as I say, far away. Don't want a lot of detail. All right, let's have some fun. Let's take, let's take, we'll use today some Prussian blue, a little bit of black, put a little crimson in it too. What the heck? Maybe a little more crimson and some white. Notice I'm leaving part of it dark and putting white only on one side. That's why I can use the same color in a darker value later on. It's called lazy man's way of painting. Wipe the old knife off. And we'll use, shoot, we'll just use that same old brush. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tap a little color right into the bristles of the two inch brush. Let's go up in here. Maybe in our world, yeah. Little Footy Hill lives way back here. There it comes. There. See, just sort of let it run across here, wherever you want it to go. All right. Then I'm going to give it a small upward lift so it looks like the tops of little distant trees live far, far away. Far away. We don't even know where they live. Don't know that we care. Clean two inch brush. And I want to tap the base of this to create the illusion of mist. Something about like that. There we go. I just want to soften the bottom edge. There. Because I want to put another layer in. Back to the, to the brush, it had the dark color on it. Now I'm going back into the darkest part of that color. This is the darkest part. Still has a little white in it, but it's darker than what's up there already. Let's go back up here. And maybe there's another little foothill that lives right in here. Notice that little misty area that we put in there. That becomes the separator, becomes your best friend. Cherish it, take care of it. Take care of it, because it'll separate these two areas. Now I'm gonna lift up once again. Gotta make those little noises. There. Something about like that. And one more time. I'm just trading brushes here. I'm going back to the clean one so I can so I can tap the base of this and create more of that misty area. Now if you need it, you could actually take a little bit of titanium white paint on the brush and create more distinct mist. Today we don't need it. But maybe when you're painting, you want a little lighter area than we have here. Just add a little titanium white to your brush, and you can do that. All right, but now see, this one, the second one is darker than the first one, so it makes it look closer to you in the landscape. All right, let's have some fun. I'm gonna clean that up. Let's take some, same color, Prussian blue, black, and alizarin crimson. We just mix them together once again. Okay, wipe off the old knife. Here we are. Now, today, Let's get a fan brush, shoot. I want to make the indication of some trees that are living closer to us. So now this is pure color, has no white in it at all. These will be the closest, so I want them to be the darkest. And all we'll do is just tap downward. Just tap downward like that. Don't want too much detail, it's too far away. When you're painting things that are far away, the lack of detail helps create that illusion of distance. If you have too much detail when it's, when it's far, far away, it'll bother your eye, even if you don't really understand why. I know, I know you've looked at paintings and you've said, hey, something's wrong with that painting. Don't know what it is, but something's wrong with it. Sometimes it can be something as simple as that, and your mind tells you it just isn't right. You decide where they live in your world, wherever. Let's say about there, that's good. Now then, we can take this brush and I'm just gonna lift it upward a little bit, just a little, sort of to smooth it together. I wanna leave these little light areas down at the base. I'll show you why in just a second, because I'm gonna put some snow underneath these. So I want those little areas to stay in there. If everything works just right, it'll look like mist and little tree trunks and all kinds of happy little things in there. Okay, let's wash the old brush again. <laughs> you figured it out. I just like to wash the brush. 
shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the dough. I got two of them. Let's wash them both. We'll wash them both while we got it going. There. People have realized this brush beating is so much fun. I get letters from friends all over the country. They tell me they really don't want to paint. They just bought a brush and beat it to take out their hostilities and frustrations. And that's okay. Titanium white. We're going to use the big brush. We'll load a lot of color into it like that. So often we avoid this big brush because it is big. It will do wonderful things. Watch, watch, watch. Maybe, watch, right there. Just make a decision. And we have snow in our world. That easy. Put a little more on there. I'm just adding some more white to my brush. There. Snow is one of the easiest things there is to paint. Look at there. But see, that blue that we put on now shows through, and it looks like shadows right back there in our world. Okay. Now then, grab another, another little two-inch brush. I'm going to take a little bit of the, we'll use a little Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, just mix together, something like so. And... Let's put a little tree back here. We'll just make it with a two inch brush. I'm just gonna tap in just a basic shape of a little tree. This be a good place for my little squirrel to live. You know, speaking of my little squirrel, I've got a new little baby squirrel. I wanna, I wanna show him to you. He's the cutest little devil you've ever seen. Watch him, look at him, isn't he something? He is so pretty. I call him Peapod Junior. If you've painted with me for a while, you know that Peapod was a little squirrel that I had for a long time who lived in my pocket. There. Isn't that the cutest little devil you ever seen? If you're not careful, you can get attached to these little rascals. And I do. They're very, very special to me. And every year I raise several and then we turn them loose and normally they go out and, beating my brush there, they go out and just live in my yard and have a good time. And they're happy out there. And, we sort of maintain them. We, we turn them loose, but at the same time, I keep food out there for them. I'm taking a little bit of white, a little bit of the bright red, just tapping the corner of the brush into it, just like that. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, I'm going to use that just to put the indication of a few little highlights on this tree, little snowy things. There. I don't want it to be too distinct, just some indications wherever. But think about some basic shapes and forms in this. Don't just throw them on at random. It is important that they have a shape. It gives the tree personality. There. All right, maybe a little bit right in there. Something like that. Wherever. In your world, you make these big decisions where all these little things live. It is totally and completely up to you. Just scrape in indication of a few little sticks and arms that live in a tree. Shoot, we're in business. Now then, let's see what we got going here. Prussian blue, black, a lizard crimson, maybe my little Van Dyke in it, it doesn't matter. As long as it's good and dark and has some blue in it. Clean off the knife. And let's see, we'll grab a, there's an old fan brush. I'm gonna load it full of this dark color, just Full of it. There we are. Maybe, maybe, you know me, I like trees. It's your bravery test. You ready? Let's come right up in here, right there. Just start by making a little touch on the canvas, then use the corner of the brush, working back and forth, forth and back. There we are. See them? They live right here in your fan brush. All you got to do is just sort of scare them out. Here he comes. There he comes. We'll just come right down in front of this tree. Because in your world, you can make these decisions and you can move them anywhere that you want. Shoot, I like that. I'm gonna have another tree. Load a little more paint. We'll have one right above this, right over the top. There, see? That easy, we got another little tree. We'll just take the knife, cut through here, make it look like there's a little trunk in there. There. Now then, let me wash my fan brush off a little bit. 
pan brush isn't as much fun to wash as a two inch brush. You can have a lot of fun with a two inch brush and get even with anybody that's hassled you. Pan brush isn't much fun. I'm gonna take a little white, put a little liquid white in that too, just to thin it down. A little bit of thalo blue. Thalo blue, there. And we'll go up in here. And with that, let's put a few highlights on this tree. I wanna keep it pretty dark, but a few highlights. This is a blue spruce, it looks like to me. There we go, a few more little duders right in there. And off we go. All right. Now maybe let's grab a one inch brush. Okay, one inch brush. We'll go into a little thalo blue in that dark color we had. It doesn't much matter. One little thalo blue in it though. And right up in here, maybe there's a happy little bush lives right here. I don't know, it's up to you. You make the decision where you think all these little things would live in your world. About like that. And let's see, we'll grab another one inch brush. I have several of them going. Show you a little trick. I'll take some liquid white, put out here. There, let me grab some more of that. Some liquid white, I'll put, I'm gonna put a little bright red in it to make a nice pinkish color that is very, very thin though, very thin, okay? Now, we'll take our one inch brush and we dip it in the liquid white. Because as you know, our golden rule is a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Get a little touch of the thalo blue. I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab a little more of the liquid white. I want it a little thinner. Pull the brush in one direction. Now right at the last here, I'm gonna take it over and take just the top through a little bit of that pink color we made, okay? Now when we put highlights on these little bushes, they'll have nice little pinky tops on them. And it just warms them up, makes them pretty. Sneaky, huh? There. That easy. That easy. You can do it. Just gives a little sparkle to your painting. If you want them all blue, that's okay too. It's up to you. Totally and completely up to you. Let's go back to an old two inch brush, put some white on it. And I'm gonna grab, and intentionally I'm grabbing a little bit of this dark color, and I wanna pull it. Pull it. There. See? And we'll, we'll change the angle of the snow right there. That easy. Just with using this big old brush. As I say, snow is very, very easy to paint when you're using brushes this big. Doesn't take but just a second. Shoot. You know me. <laughs> I want a little cabin right out here because this would be an ideal place to live. Let's take, scrape out the paint. By scraping the paint out, it does two things. It allows us to sort of lay out our basic shape. And secondly, it removes excess paint. Take a little Van Dyke Brown, paint the back eave, the front. Just about like that. There. See? But you're still not committed. You can change your mind. That's what's so great about this little dark sienna mixed in there too. There. Now we'll take a little white. A little bit of the brown, mix it together. Barely grazing the canvas, barely touching it. Just let it float right down there. Make it look like old wood. Now on the other side, not much light's gonna hit over there. I want it very dark, just, that's enough. Just enough to give a hint of color. While we have that dark on the knife, now we have a little door, that easy. And we can come back, make it look like an old slab building. Put some boards on it. Now, the most important part, we gotta put a roof on it. We, we don't want it to snow in on him. So we'll take a little of the titanium white, come right up in here. I like to sort of lay out the shape so I have a nice straight edge to work from there. And then when you pull it down, it's nice and straight. That easy. Over here on the other side, 
just a little snow, like that. Take a little touch of light color, sort of outline the door a little bit. And there we are, and we're in business. Take our knife, we can do a cabinectomy. That means we just cut it off to however we want it. There we go. Now, back to our old brush, old two inch brush that had the white on it. We can come down here and clean up the edges a little. About like that. Shoot, we're in business. Now, maybe a few little bushes growing around the edge here. Something about like so. Because he probably was like me. He didn't take care of his lawn very well and it grew up. Come winter time, it's still there. Now then, come back in here, tap in a few little bushes. This is once again the liquid white, titanium white, just mixed together to thin the paint a little. It's the only thing you're doing, it's just thinning the paint a little bit so it'll stick right on the top of that. Now, all right, I like that side. Let's do the other side. Bravery test. Gonna load it full of dark color. Right there. Let's have a big old tree that lives in our world. I like big trees. There they are. Now you could actually make these trees with a one inch brush, two inch brush, whatever. Up to you. I like the fan brush sometimes. When you want a little more detail, it does give you a little more detail. We'll create another one right there. Something about my cat. Recently we took a trip to Japan and met all of our friends in Japan who are painting and we did a painting very similar to this and it went over so well people liked it. Some fantastic painters there. Fantastic. We have a whole group of instructors now in Japan that are that are literally spreading the joy from one end of Japan to the other. There. All right. How's that? Got three trees now. And once again, we can take the knife and just scrape in some indication of a few little trunks and things that live in there. All you're doing is scraping through the paint, let the canvas show a little. Maybe there's a stick here. We don't know. All right. Back to our one inch brush. I want to change the angle here. So by, I'll put in a bush or two right here, like that. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Liquid white on the fan brush, back in to a little titanium white, little thalo blue. Okay, let's go back up in here. Now, they have to decide which tree's in the front. I think the big one is. So we'll put a little indication on the ones that are far behind first. Darker, darker, darker. Just turn the brush over, we use this one. There, just let it disappear, let it disappear. It gets darker toward the base. Now we can come in here. This tree is in the foreground, so we make it the predominant tree. This is the boss tree, there. All right, now dip our one inch brush into liquid white, a little bit of the thalo blue. Once again, I'm gonna take the tips through that little bit of pink. I like that little pink right on the edge. And we'll just drop that right in, something like so. See there? And we'll put in all kind of little bushes where they live here. There. Back to old two inch brush, put a little snow right in like that. There. Something about like that. And that easy, we got a happy little duder there. I'm gonna take a little liner brush, just a little bit of brown on it. I wanna put the indication right here. Doop, doop, little fence, it goes back off, like in there. There he goes, something like so. Shoot, I think with that, we got a finished painting. This is one I hope you'll try. I know you'll enjoy it. Until next time, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.